Hey guys, how's it going? In this video I'm going to go over the electromagnetic spectrum. Specifically we're going to look at the radiations in the spectrum, the order of the radiations in the spectrum, and also some properties of these radiations. So let's get started. We're going to start by looking at properties of electromagnetic waves. And the first thing to note is that light is a form of electromagnetic radiation. Notice we use capital E capital M to mean electromagnetic, just so we don't have to say that long word every time. But it's also the case that other waves have similar properties to light waves. And these are all grouped together in what we call the EM spectrum, the electromagnetic spectrum, which identifies them by their wavelength or frequency. And another property is that all electromagnetic waves are transverse waves. Remember we've already seen longitudinal and transverse waves, and transverse waves were ones in which the particles move at right angles or perpendicular to the wave direction. And all EM waves also travel at the speed of light, 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. This is a really important point that you're going to need to remember when you're doing numerical problems and in the worked examples as well. So if we look at this picture here, this is an overview of the electromagnetic spectrum. And you'll see it's made up of different types of radiations. And we'll look at all of these types of radiation in more detail in the types of electromagnetic spectrum video. But for now we can look at this and try and make sense of it. So we've got a picture of a wave, and this is so we can see roughly what the size of a wavelength would be for a specific type of radiation. So the first thing to make you aware of is that all of these types of radiation are just forms of light. They're different forms of light, some of which we can see, some of which we can't see. And in actual fact, we can only see the visible region in the electromagnetic spectrum. All of these other types of electromagnetic radiation we cannot see with our naked eye. So it's only a very small part of this spectrum that we can actually see. So the radiations we have are radio and sometimes TV waves as well are grouped with radio waves because they have a similar wavelength, but usually TV waves would appear in between radio and microwaves. So after radio we have microwaves, then infrared, visible light, ultraviolet radiation, x-rays and gamma rays. And you'll notice what happens from one end to the other as we look at the size of the wave. So you'll see that for radio waves we have really big waves on the scale of about a thousand meters. So one wavelength for a radio wave is about the size of a building, a large building or a mountain, or you might think of it as the size of a football pitch. And this means that the waves are really big, really long for radio waves. And it's actually the case that if we go from this end towards this end, you'll see the wave gets smaller and smaller. As we go to microwaves, you'll see we have waves on the scale of about 10 to the minus 2, infrared about 10 to the minus 5, so getting smaller and smaller, visible light waves, the ones that we can see, about 0 0.5 times 10 to the minus 6 meters, and ultraviolet 10 to the minus 8 meters, getting smaller again to x-rays 10 to the minus 10 meters and gamma rays at 10 to the minus 12 meters. So gamma rays at this end and x-rays, they are really, really short wavelength waves. So you need to be aware that at one end of the spectrum we have really long waves and at the other end of the spectrum we have really short waves. And below the wave picture here, you've got some common objects to give you an idea of the size and the scale of this wave for that radiation. So as the wave gets smaller and smaller towards this end, we go from buildings to the size of a human to the size of a honeybee, then the size of a pinpoint, so the point at the end of this needle, then to the size of protozoans, that's just type of bacteria, then onto the size of molecules, then the size of atoms, and then the size of atomic nuclei, which are obviously inside of atoms, so they're going to be smaller. And the last thing to point out in this picture is the frequency. And what I want to draw your attention to is the fact that the wavelength is decreasing as we go towards the shorter wavelength. But as we go this way for the frequency, you'll see that the frequency is actually increasing. So it's actually the case that the wavelength and the frequency have an inverse relationship. And all this means is that as one goes down, the other one goes up or as one goes up, the other one goes down. So it's useful to think as wavelength and frequency as almost being opposites in a sense. So if you've got a big wavelength, that means you've got a small frequency. Or if you've got a big frequency, that means you've got a small wavelength. So the last thing to note is something that I just mentioned earlier, which is that radio and TV waves have similar wavelengths, though those for radio waves are slightly higher, and therefore they're often grouped into the same category. This means that TV waves are sometimes not mentioned explicitly, as was the case up here. So remember we said that TV waves would fit in between radio and microwaves, but they're not mentioned explicitly in this example. So you might sometimes see the spectrum with TV waves in it, or you might not. Now the next thing to point out to you is that the waves with greatest frequency have the greatest energy. So in our case it would be gamma rays because gamma rays, remember, had the greatest frequency at the right hand side of the spectrum in the picture we just looked at. These are therefore the most dangerous types of waves because the more energy the waves have, the more damage they can usually do to things like cells and human body tissue. 
So if you're thinking about the most dangerous types of waves, it's going to be ultraviolet, followed by x-rays, and then followed by the most damaging, which is gamma rays. And you might be thinking, how are they dangerous? Well, remember ultraviolet rays, we'll see later, ultraviolet rays can cause skin cancer if you're exposed to too much. X-rays, if you go for too many X-rays within one year, then you actually might exceed your annual limit and that could do damage to your cells or your body tissue. And gamma rays as well can cause abnormal cells to form and cause cancerous tumours and things like that. And on the other hand, radio waves would be the safest type of wave. You wouldn't think of radio waves travelling through the air as being damaging to you. And we've already mentioned the relationship between frequency and wavelength, but it says it here explicitly. So as the frequency of the waves increases, the wavelength decreases since the speed is constant. So remember that inverse relationship for frequency and wavelength. If we have one increasing, then the other needs to decrease. So if we look at this picture now, we've got the types of electromagnetic radiation in order. I've included TV waves in here just so we've got all of them in there explicitly. And you'll notice we've got arrows showing you the relationship as we go along the spectrum. So you'll see it starts Starting off with radio waves, TV waves, microwaves, infrared, visible light, ultraviolet, x-rays and gamma rays. If we were to start off at the bottom from gamma rays and go up the way, that means we are increasing in wavelength. Because remember, gamma rays have the shortest wavelengths and radio waves have the longest wavelengths. So we would be going from a shorter wavelength to a longer wavelength and increasing in wavelength from the bottom up there. But if we were to start at the top at radio waves and move down the way to the bottom at gamma rays, then we would actually be increasing in frequency instead, which is also increasing energy. So remember we said that gamma rays down here would have the highest energy because they're the most dangerous. And how might you remember this order? Well, here's a funny little mnemonic that I've given you. If you're creative, you can come up with your own mnemonic to try and remember this order. But here's mine relating to a place near air called Maybole. And it says, running through Maybole in vibrant underwear excites grannies. You'll see I've cheated a wee bit with the capital X, but there are only so many words beginning with X. So I had to kind of improvise there. So if you do come up with your own and you want to share it, then please put it in the comments. And I might even share it with my classes if I think it's good. And lastly, it's worth just pointing out that the letters in bold stand for the letters of the electromagnetic radiation in the spectrum. So radio, TV waves, microwaves, infrared, visible light, ultraviolet, x-rays and gamma rays. That's all for now, folks. I hope you found the video useful. If you did, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.